Hey everybody, welcome to The Short Score. This is the last week of Pro Rodeo's regular season, so that's going to dominate conversation, of course. Hi, Caitlin. Hey, Chels. Well, give us a rundown. Now, you... No, you weren't in Amarillo this weekend. Everybody else was in Amarillo at the World Series this weekend. You stayed home, huh? I was pretending I was there, but yeah, I stayed home. You stayed home. You stayed home. All right, yeah. I did too. I did too. But the (laughs) the rest of our crew from Colorado, I know some of them went to the World Series in Amarillo. Some of them went to that U.S. Open in Colorado Springs. It was kind of split up, but... Mm -hmm. And this weekend, I know here in Colorado, we've got a World Series at Bo Rappel's Arena in mm-hmm. Gill, Colorado. So are you going to that? I'm going to try to. I haven't found any runs yet, but if I find one, I'll head up that way. Well, everybody, Caitlin is <laughs> looking for runs <laughs> at the World Series in Gill this weekend. But anyway, in the meantime, we have been following the Pro Rodeo results. Now, let's talk about what happened over the weekend. Jeez, bubble update. Mm-hmm. Uh, Lane Ivy, he's still sitting in the 15th spot right now. Mm-hmm. Um, he and Buddy, they placed at Amarillo. Um, Which was a pretty clutch 2700 that they won there. Yeah, it definitely helped them out. Buddy moved up to 14th. So he's not really secure yet, but it definitely helped him out with just a couple more rodeos left. Yeah, a lot could happen this week. They I, the thing about this past weekend was that nothing was solidified. You know, mm-hmm. there were a lot of opportunities that we could have kind of had a better sense of what was going to happen. But a lot of teams that kind of need to win a little won a little, and nobody won just a ton other than maybe Coleman Proctor and Ryan Motes. They ran through them this past weekend, did they not? Yeah, they um, they won Texarkana with a 4.1 second run. They added... Uh, almost 3000 to their earnings, and they won Spring Hill with the 3.8 second run, adding another uh, 1000 almost 2000 to their earnings. So um, they're out of it, though. Uh, Proctor's 18th in the standings right now with $59,506.65, and Moats is 22nd with $53,809.48. Um, but... Those two wins were pretty good for them. Well, you said they're they're out of it. They are out of it at the moment, but I wouldn't count Coleman or Ryan out at this point of the season. Um, Coleman has three rodeos left. Ryan has five. And that win at Spring Hill did not count for Coleman. He didn't have that one counted, so that's a huge bummer. But they estimate, when we talk to them, they estimate that they have about um, 9000 that they can win this week at the rodeos that they can count. So that would make a big difference. Um, they're going to make a big final push. So mm-hmm. um, There's lots of teams that are still in the mix, which is pretty interesting at this time of year. And it used to be, um, back a few years ago, we always had Omaha, that you could win a huge amount and jump from 25th or or even further back, up into the top 15 at the last week of the season. There, There is Omaha this week, but it's not the finale that it used to be um, that paid a huge amount. So it's going to be where people place, where people catch at a bunch of different rodeos uh, this time of the year. Yeah, it's been crazy. Yeah, and this <laughs> week is definitely bubble week here at The Score because we've got Buddy Hawkins. We talked to him yesterday. Um, he will be on the actual score on Thursday. Thursday that mm-hmm. comes out. Um, 14th episode. Yeah, the 14th episode. We are through 14 different interviews with Team Ropers, so that's great. Um, and, buddy, it's it's a long one uh, because there was just so much to cover with him. So you can look forward to that for your Thursday drive. Uh, in other news, it's crazy. I thought it was crazy. Billy Jack Sabin's won Amarillo two years in a row now. Mm-hmm. Uh, he won it with Coleman last year, and this year he won it again with Charlie Crawford. And, yeah, Buddy told us that that starts their Prairie Circuit season, which I didn't realize. That's one of the first Prairie Circuit rodeos for 2019. So the race is on because I think it went Billy Jack, uh, Tanner Braden, and Buddy Hawkins were um, one and then two and three. So Prairie Circuit race is already (laughs) off to a good start. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then uh, Charlie Crawford and Billy Jack, they also placed fifth at the Spring Hill uh, pro rodeo. Um, they were up in 4.3 seconds at both of those rodeos this weekend. So I thought that's pretty cool too if you can just back to back hit that same time. Yeah, and Billy Jack has Kevin back, his black horse, um, which we actually have a story. Kendra Santos wrote a story about Kevin and his recovery in our uh, November issue that we're working on right now. I know Softride, um, 
Kevin has been icing after every run, before every run, in his soft ride ice spas, which is super cool. Um, we've had some photos of that um, on our social channels over the last couple months. So excited to see Kevin back. That's that fancy black horse that looks like a bulldog that Billy Jack rides. So definitely um, look for him in 2019. In other news, our Resist All Rookie race is still heating up. Uh, Jeff Flanagan has not backed off. He's still number one. Um, and he's still sitting uh, 17th in the, the PRCA world standings. So if he can get a couple more caught, a little bit more money one, we might be able to see him at the finals. Um, he tied Driggers, Caleb Driggers and Junior Nagira at Texarkana with his partner Jake Miner for ninth. Uh, they just won almost $300. It's not a big paycheck, but I feel like any money Rodeo was so tough. Right they were 4 8 <laughs> and it was ninth for yeah. $295. So, yeah. I couldn't even imagine being 4 8 at a World Series roping. <laughs> yeah, yep, they were doing it. Um, and Kyle Dennison, uh, he is still fourth, but he added uh, $1,736 to his earnings. Um, he and Colby Payne tied Derek Begay and Corey Petska and... Clay Smith and Paul Eves at Amarillo for fifth. Um, so that was a good paycheck for them. And uh, Tanner Green, he's still sixth in the standings. He tied for third with Eric Rogers and Clint Summers, who we will be seeing at the finals. Uh, I'm excited for them, especially Clint making his first trip to the NFR. Um, yeah. He repped with Timber Moore at Spring Hill. So that. <laughs> That was different. Yeah. yeah. Um, just a little, you know, I know we're talking about the rookies. We're talking about the bubble. But something that we haven't talked about a lot that um, that is kind of an untold story right now is this Clay Smith and Paul Leaves and Caleb Driggers and Junior Nagara and Deskin Aguizquiza and Corey Coons are all battling to win the regular season. Um, it's kind of a... It's a title that everybody kind of wants up there at the top. So right now, Clay Smith is winning it with $112,401. And Driggers is just about 1000 behind, a little, a little maybe 2000 behind, um, with $110,989. And on the heel side, Paul Leaves has about the same spread. No, it's about $500 between mm-hmm. Paul and Junior. Um, to win the year end on the heel side. So that's kind of one of the tough things about the bubble right now is that while everybody's trying to win every dollar that they can at the back end, they are. it's not like it's easy. You can't at, count out the top guys. Yeah, right the now. top guys aren't backing off. They're not making it easier for anybody. Um, I mean, you see Derek Begay still going, mm-hmm. you know, Clay and Paul and Caleb and Junior and Dustin and Corey, and, and nobody's backing off. So it's kind of exciting to see. Um, it's a, it's a fun race at the top, but it's even more fun race at the bottom. It's definitely a knife fight going on right now. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and um, also on the heel side, we finally have a couple cool things on the heel side for the rookies. And the resist all rookie race, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jake Edwards roped with Colby Clement. Um, he's sitting fourth right now. They tied Ross Lowry and Stephen Brettinol. Um, at the Central Central Hall, uh, Pennsylvania, mm-hmm. they just won a little under a hundred dollars. But like I Some said, some movement on the there's hillside. movement. Mm-hmm. Um, and Corey Barnett, he moved from eighth to seventh, um, and he and his partner Keith Hanna uh, won second at Century Hall with a five point seven second run. Mm-hmm. They won a little over nine hundred dollars. So there was a little jump there. And uh, sitting ninth right now is Tyson Thompson. Uh, he hasn't been in the top ten, so mm-hmm. that was a new new name in that standings. Uh, he and uh, Chase Thompson, they tied Jesse Stipes and Jake Smith at Texarkana for seventh with a 4.7 second run. So Yeah, and we've been making a point to talk about the Resist All Rookie standings because, for a couple of reasons. Um, you only get one chance to be a Resist All Rookie of the Year. Mm-hmm. You get um, every chance for the rest of your career to be a world champ, to make the NFR, but there's only one shot one year at the Resist All Rookie of the Year standings, and that kind of makes it pretty special. 
Um, on top of that, we always go to the Rosa Style Rookie Luncheon at the NFR in Las Vegas, and they make it such a special event. Um, everybody gets saddles, cactus saddles, Rosa Style hats, uh, Rosa Style apparel, um, and they get to be a part of a really nice luncheon where you get to hear former Resist- Resist All Rookie of the Years and World Champs speak, and it's just one of those great events in Las Vegas. Um, it's invitation only, um, and it's it's something we never miss every year. So we've been following the race all year because I think it it needs followed, and it's really important, and it's a way to kind of help grow the sport um, from the bottom up. So um, just make sure you take a look at these standings, root for these guys, pick some new up-and-coming favorites in the process. On the World Series front, there was a lot of great things that happened this weekend, but most notably in Amarillo, that was the Adva Ropen, which is a big favorite Ropen every year. Um, it goes to an amazing charity, the Advo Companies, um, Todd and Carla Hughes. Todd puts on this roping. It was part of the Top of Texas 2, This that's both charity ropings. Um, earlier in the year, the Wiley Hicks Jr. Memorial and the Advo Ropen this la- last weekend got together and gave out a trailer for the high money winner at the two ropings. Marcus Bustamante won that trailer it is a sweet ride. We got to see it this spring. So congratulations, Marcus. In U.S. finals news, guys, you missed the earned entry deadline was on the 21st um, of this past September, a couple days ago. You've got until the 28th to get in your direct entries. So don't mark that on your calendar. Make don't sure you miss it. don't miss the U.S. finals this year. They're going to be special. They're going to be a lot different than they've been in years past. And We hope you all be there. All right, everybody. That's it for the short score this week. I hope you enjoyed it. And don't forget, this Thursday, we will have our episode with Buddy Hawkins for another bigger bubble update, a little bit more about what it's like to be on the bubble. Um, So don't miss it. And we will talk to you soon. Look forward to hearing from you.